Hey everyone, this is Chris and welcome back to the Beamer Barn. Today we're going to be looking at why I have two of the exact same E39 behind me and why I bought them and what our plans are. Now if you're following the channel, you'll have seen that recently we did pick up a new BMW. It's actually one of the cars behind me here for a project because we're going to be building it on the channel soon. Flashback. Eventually. But in the meantime, before I was able to make this video, I had a friend reach out to me and he told me that he wanted to get rid of his super high mileage E39 that's been in his family for almost two decades and I absolutely could not pass him up on the offer. So that's why I have two matching Titan Silver E39s, both of them with five speed manual transmissions and both of them with six cylinders from BMW. But after that, the differences do start to come into play. They do both have black leather interior and I'm gonna walk you guys through both of these cars and try to tell you what my plans are and hopefully you guys can help me decide what exactly we're gonna do with each of these cars. So let's go ahead and take a look. So we are here in an undisclosed location here in Florida because I've had to store this car, my 525i here for a few weeks while we took care of some other videos and the E46 wagon. This is a 528i that I most recently purchased and I'm super happy that we were able to add it to the Beamer Barn stable because it's just an awesome example of what every E39 should be. This car is fully tip top, taken care of. But before we get into it, I wanna go ahead and show you guys the 525i that I purchased first. So here it is in all its glory. It's got this awesome OEM roof rack on top of it. It is a 525i, which makes it a facelift model. We have the style 65 wheels, I believe. I always get the five, the 65s and the 66 confused, but uh, either one of these is the 65 and one of these is the 66, obviously. Uh, so this car has, you know, the facelift motor, that the facelift interior. Uh, it is an 03, I believe, and it is Titan Silver here in the front. The previous owner did have an incident uh, with the car where the door was swung open way too far, so the door is sort of bent and creased right here. And also you can see that we have some surface rust coming up from the fuel filler area this is super common on e39s if you have a problem like this take care of it sooner rather than later i'll be making a video trying to solve this problem on a couple of my cars and it's just great that we have this car to show you as an example of what the worst case scenario looks like. So I've got the car currently on the charger because it was left here for a while without running and the battery seems to have drained itself, but hoping that we can give it a test start in a few minutes once it's done charging. And now let's look at the interior. So like I said, black leather interior. I think this is the base model interior. So you see it's not like the luxury seats or anything. Factory black piano trim, factory five speed manual, you know, facelift, everything in here. And I think we have the OBC low cluster, which is what you get on the six cylinders. Uh, so awesome interior in here. I actually purchased this car out of Kissimmee and the previous owner was daily driving it. He would drive from Kissimmee into Orlando, which is about an hour drive for work. So this car is definitely in tip top running condition. It does have a check engine light and that is because the secondary air pump had a fault and then the owner decided to do a delete and basically block it off. Really quickly, I'll show you here that there is supposed to be a valve right there, secondary air pump valve, and then a hose that goes, I believe under to the pump that should be under here under the bumper. Uh, but I think he got a code, got frustrated, and deleted that. Also, we see weird on this motor, it has a catch can. Um, weird. 
So not sure if the factory PCB is still under there, but that's definitely something that catches my eye. So otherwise, engine bay looking pretty good, pretty clean. You know, it's standard. It's all stock here, again, besides the aftermarket PCV. So not a whole lot going on. Just wanted to show you guys, you know, no surprises in here. The headlights are aftermarket, not a big fan of them, but you know, what are you gonna do? Now back to the inside of the car, we have an Eon on. This is the same radio as the one that I installed on my E39. If you wanna see a video about it, I'll put it up in the corner here. Uh, we got this, you know, cup holder. The interior is honestly in pretty good condition. So yeah, I I'm not sure what else to show you guys. Obviously it does run, the battery's a little dead. Let me see, I think I have the key. Yep, let's try to start it really quick and see if the battery is charged enough. Oh, all right. Well, she will definitely start soon. So we just got to wait a little bit longer. You can see it's charging up. It was literally super dead earlier. There was no light coming from the dome light here. Here in the back of the car, you'll see it looks like these seats have never even been used before. We've got the BMW owner's manual. What looks like some aftermarket floor mats here aren't not too bad, but really the interior is in super good condition. There is a little bit of a uh, discrepancies but I think we could probably fix something like this with glue but otherwise you know no tears nothing no big deal in this car and it is super high mileage it's got about like 200 and something thousand miles and that brings me to my point about these cars being so damn reliable 200,000 miles on a six-cylinder from a BMW is just nothing I mean it's it is really nothing I, I remember the old mobile one commercial where they took an e30 and they put it on a dyno for a million miles and they just did regular oil changes in the car did fine you know these things will just take highway miles no problem and when you buy a 5 series with high mileage you're probably going to be pretty confident that someone was doing a lot of highway trips in it because it is really a, a long distance cruiser the six cylinder gets pretty good gas mileage so that makes this thing a great driver's vehicle so now let's take a look in the trunk. I don't think there's any any big deal here. We do have a factory spare, which is really cool, came with the car. And these are all OEM wheels, so there is a little bit of value to these. They're actually the staggered ones. So the wheels, you know, with tires, the set is honestly probably worth like $1,000. And I got this car for under $1,500. We've got some extra coolant here, you know, classic. Good, good car owners will always keep extra tools and fluids in the car but let's see if there's the tools i don't even know if i've even checked this yet yep she's got tools in here so that's pretty cool you know it's just a full factory car so this car is pretty standard i'd say it's your run-of-the-mill e39 it's a really good example it's a little bit torn up in terms of the body with you know some of the dents on the door here and also the paint is like super dried out and starting to crack on the hood here and it's just not in the best condition same thing on the roof as well paint is just you know probably beyond repair honestly which is unfortunate but you could probably repaint the roof and the trunk for a pretty good deal then the problem is going to be the gas cap right here so this car you know got it for a good deal great driver's car but obviously for the good deal there are some problems cosmetically the car does need maybe even a full paint job it's missing oem pieces like the headlights and the secondary air pump system so i would say that it's a good deal at about 1400 dollars that i paid for this thing but what's funny is that that's also exactly what i paid for this as well so this was also another under 1500 dollars 528i so this is the pre facelift it's got the older m52 technical update motor which is similar to the m54 but it does have its differences so here's the m52 tu you'll see that it looks a little bit more like an m52 because you know the intake manifold very different it does have an aftermarket intake here but i think that we have the factory air box in the back of the car and i'm probably going to install it um, and then here we have the secondary air pump which as you can see, you know, it uses a valve, very similar placement to the M54. So overall, this thing, very similar. You know, the two motors, the 28i and the 25i, they actually both come in at around 190 horsepower, I believe. And then you've got the M54 B30, which is the 3.0 liter version of that motor. And it comes in around 220 horsepower, 230 horsepower. So if you want, you know, a six cylinder with even more power, I would really look at the E39 facelifts with the 530 motor. But anyways, not a ton to see here in the engine bay. It is really disgusting though. It looks like people have been working on this thing and never even once bothered to wipe off anything in the engine bay, but not a big deal. Again, just something aesthetic that we can easily 
easily clean and it'll help the car look a ton better. Now, even though this thing is a pre-facelift, you'll see that it has facelift headlights. And we're going to have to take a closer look at these later because we do have a bulb warning. And that's because when you retrofit the facelift headlights into a pre-facelift car, you have to change the wiring up and, and do some coding, some different things if you really want that plug and play compatibility and, and all the functions there. These things have the angel eyes, so you kind of have to wire them into the running lights and, and just a bunch of different things. So we'll probably cover this in an upcoming episode. I do want to upgrade the pre-facelift harness on my M5 wagon to facelift to run headlights just like this. So you can guarantee that we'll be showing you guys a little bit more detail about the wiring and installation of these. And obviously from the front, one of the best things that you can do on your E39 is upgrade to an M5 or an m -Tech style bumper. Uh, this one is aftermarket. What you do notice is on the aftermarket ones, they tend to come up a little bit short on the fender, but that's not a big deal. You don't really notice it. You can also trim the bumper or, or do some modifications up here to make it fit better, but I don't know if it's worth it. It does look really good and people are gonna know when you have a 528i that it's not a M5, so you might as well just rock the M5 bumper. So now let's take a look inside the car. This car has the wood grain equipped from factory, which is actually probably one of my favorite trim options just because it looks super classy and uh, I guess vintage. The driver's seat probably has the most wear on it and it's not even that bad. I'd say like right here, it's probably gonna start peeling up, but it's not yet to that point. And you can probably keep it from getting to that point by adding some leather conditioner and just taking good care of the interior. The steering wheel is a little torn up. You know, we do have some wear marks, you know, some cracking from this car, I think being stored outside. And here on the trim as well, we do have a couple of minor cracks. You don't really notice it too much. I mean, I think you can, you can kind of tell it's there. Not a big deal though, in my opinion. These seats are just in great condition you know the passenger seat the rear looks like it may have had some use i'm not sure what these uh imprints are on the seat here maybe something was put in and it stretched the leather i wonder if we can get that out with our steam cleaner though just kind of like steaming up the leather maybe it'll help it tighten back up again so again i you know these cars i'm very used to them everything in here is stock so there's not too much to talk about factory radio works everything works and even the car runs without a check engine light which was one of the biggest reasons that i said that this was an easy purchase decision for me was it came in and a good deal it shows somewhere but it's clearly been taken care of give her a little start i did just drive this car in hours so i know that it runs great and as you can see no check engine light no abs light no anything obviously the parking brake is up so i can put that up and down and then i need to put my seatbelt on but we do have that bulb warning, like I said. And also I think that the car is low on washer fluid. So that probably needs to be topped off. Here in the back of the car, I have a ton of extra parts that came with this thing. Again, this came from an enthusiast owner. They kept it for about two decades. So I've got a ton of extra parts, including the original non-facelift headlights. I've got an extra glass that he pulled from the junkyard, which is cool. I think the factory air box is in here. Factory grills are right here. And I think we even have like a window regulator, actually some, it looks like some extra side view mirrors right here. So ton of extra cool parts for us to go through. Maybe put some of these on my eBay page cause you know, the car doesn't really need an extra set of headlights or an extra set of side view mirrors. We'll check out the toolkit on this car, make sure it's complete as well. Nice. You can see it's even got some, a little bit of rust on there. Got some age to it, like a fine wine. Oh, and while we're looking at the trunk here, uh, tell me what, what should I do guys? Let me know in the comments down below. Should we peel this off or should we try to paint it and, and put it back on with some 3M tape? Cause I'm not opposed to either. I kind of like the cleaner look on the back of the car, but the M Sport spoiler looks pretty good as well. So maybe, maybe we'll have to take this off and repaint it and then we can re-glue it on here cause it's clearly loose. Now, as far as the outside of this car goes, like I said, really nice condition. Uh, do have a little bit of surface rust here on the uh, fuel filler door, uh, but that's not a big deal. A couple of small dents on the doors here, very, very small. And then one of the biggest things that I noticed was the front end has definitely been repainted. I think that he said that in his ownership that they had rock chips on the hood. And so they went to repaint the hood. And at the same time, they did the M5 bumper. And then I think that the body shop who did the work actually painted the fenders to get a good blend in with the silver. So it does blend really well from the hood all the way to the door. On the door, there is a little bit 
of a blemish i'm not sure what this happened here but it looks like maybe someone keyed it and then tried to repaint over a key mark but then we also have the same thing right here so these are like the only couple of blemishes that i see on the outside of this car otherwise really good condition and i don't see any of the like peeling paint issues like we saw on the 525 so obviously this car has been kept up a little bit better you know doing things just as simple as washing the car once a month with some wash and wax can keep the paint in great condition to make sure it doesn't get all cracked up like this car right here so why did i buy two of the same exact bmw well i originally bought the 525i because I have this extra touring chassis that we originally were gonna do the M5 swap on, but then I bought the 540 that had all the parts. I kinda like the color better. So I put the 528i wagon on the back burner and currently it's just sitting in my driveway just holding parts as like a shed almost. So I bought this 525i because I thought it'd be really cool to swap the drivetrain into that car, do a facelift motor conversion, and then we would have a running and driving touring that I could use to go get groceries, you know, hopefully get good gas mileage, and I could loan it out to friends as well to kind of show them why I love the E39 Touring so much. So the 528i next to me, I figured that we would pick up and add to the channel because I thought that this would be a great car to do maybe like a mini flip series on. So you guys tell me, I'm gonna put this in your hands. We could either keep it around a little bit and try to you know fix a couple things here and there or i could make one master episode of us flipping the car doing a full transformation and getting it ready for sale i think that my plan is i want to put this car the 528i on cars and bids and i want to put it on a no reserve auction so that someone can get this car at a screaming good deal and they'll be able to continue the legacy of that e39 right there because that thing has plenty more miles left in it now the 525i like i said i would really Really love to do the conversion on my touring I hope you guys would want to see some m54 content on the e39 and maybe in the future we could throw something on like a turbo or something cool on that car to take it to the next level but let me know what you guys think in the comments below of these e39s we could decide to change our mind and maybe sell the 525i and keep the 528i to swap into my wagon maybe I sell both of these you know you guys tell me what you want to see on the channel this is a really exciting opportunity and I'm happy to have both of these cars to show to you to make content with and hopefully you guys enjoy that sort of stuff too so that's going to conclude our video for today i hope you guys enjoyed watching and you're excited as i am for the plans and the content that is going to be coming to this channel please consider subscribing if you're new and you haven't yet leave a like and a comment down below and as always i hope everyone has an awesome day we'll see you next time